put the wrong stuff? Whatever. Oh, please tell me. Good evening, and stuff. welcome to the Town of Prescott Valley Art and Culture Commission regular meeting. Um, can I get a roll call, Mrs. Weiss? Commissioner Wirtz? Here. Commissioner Smith? Here. Commissioner Gibson? Here. Vice Chair Quisenberry? Present. Chairperson Sinclair? Here. Thank you very much. You have in front of you the agenda. March. Can I get an approval for tonight's agenda? Can I, a motion to approve? You can I make a motion that we approve the agenda as presented. Seconded. We have a motion and a second to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting as presented. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposition? No opposition. Motion pass. Approval of minutes from the March 20th, 2019 regular meeting. Can I get a motion to approve? Okay. Motion to approve minutes from our last meeting as presented. Motion. I have a motion and a second to approve the uh, March 20th uh, regular meeting minutes. All in favor, say aye. 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 Oppose? Motion pass. Announcements, presentations, commission and public staff. Commission public and staff. I'll get it right. <laughs> Guest I have to make an apology. Our guest artist was contacted a little later than I meant to, and she won't be here tonight. Um, so Nancy will be joining us for our August meeting, which is entirely my fault. Nancy was very pleasant on the phone. <laughs> so my apologies, and thank you for being understanding. Understand. So uh, for programs, classes, and special events, we have be a better basketball player, have fun and learn the fundamentals of basketball with Co Coach Roy Jenkins. All basketball camps are taught with fun with a purpose. Next session starts Friday, April 12th for ages 8 through 12, and there's also a session for ages 13 to 17. To register or for more information, you can contact Parks and Recreation at 928 759-3090. You can also check out our website at www.pvaz.net to get to the registration. If basketball is not your thing, you can find your inner peace with one of our fitness classes. Parks and Recreation offers an assortment of classes to help you get you started on your journey. And all classes are catered to all levels of experience and ability. Come and check out Yoga Light, Chair Yoga, Morning Yoga, Yoga Nidra, which is a guided meditation. We also have a new evening yoga class starting on April 30th that will run on Tuesdays and Thursdays, and a new Tai Chi class. To find more out about our exercise and yoga classes, you can register or you can, find, you can go to our website, www.pvaz.net or you can give us a call at 928-759-3090. And a little bit more about Tai Chi, it's a new class starting this May. You'll learn how to integrate mind, body, and breath with Tai Chi. It's perfect for those looking for a gentle, low-impact physical class. The first class will be on Friday, May 3rd. It's held from 2.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. And that'll take place on the third floor of the Civic Center in the activity room. Again, you can register online at pvaz.net or call us at 928-759-3090. A little bit more about evening yoga. This is the one that's starting on April 30th. Um, our instructor, Mary Pat, has decided to extend her morning classes and do some evening classes as well. We're very excited to have her on board for some more classes. You can join us for the first class on Tuesday, April 30th from 5.30 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. in the Civic Center in room 331. Please bring your yoga mat um, so that you're prepared for class and get ready to wind down for the evening with Mary Pat. If you're looking for something outside of classes to do, we have a wonderful experience coming up with our Arbor Day program. This year, Arbor Day will be at Sunflower Park on Friday, April 26th from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. We'll have students from Acorn Montessori joining us to learn how to plant trees, and the public is welcome as well. Um, so you can learn about trees, why we need them, why we plant them, how to plant them, 
and all of that good stuff. And you get to meet our awesome parks crew, really hardworking guys who will be there. The Lions Club in Prescott Valley will also be helping us out that day. They have uh, secured a donation of hot dogs and buns so that we're able to provide some food for attendees. We'll also have light light drinks such as water and uh, some chips available with your hot dog. If you'd like more information about Arbor Day, you can call us at 928-759-3090 or check our schedule of events to learn more about Arbor Day and other events at www.pvaz.net. Any questions about any of our programs or classes? Good job. Busy time. Yeah. Yep. We're picking up. There's even more coming later, Andy. Get ready for it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Division department update, Mr. Witte. Commissioners, I'll have to apologize. Your packet uh, this evening was uh, assembled incorrectly. Unfortunately, you have with you a February monthly report. Uh, so I will have to defer to our next meeting and report on March and April both together. So I'm sorry about that. Uh, but. You don't have to listen to me for a little while longer. <laughs> but, okay. Chairman's report. Well, it's been pretty busy lately. Uh, great events taking place all over the region. Uh, Family Arts Festival and Extravaganza was just this past weekend. Had very good crowds there. Kids had lots of fun. Um, like to thank the uh, sponsors, Arizona Hometown Radio Group, the Palma, Team USA Martial Arts, Big O Tire, and Truly, Noma, the, Truly Nolan. That is so difficult to get out when you're thinking about a big Yellow. car <laughs> with big red ears. So, but thank you very much. And there is a variety of different events coming up, uh, especially uh, in about a week and a half, uh, Gold Fever Days over at Fane Park. So do drop by. That's about it that I have for the chairman's report. Oh, business. Family Arts Festival, wrap up. Thank you, Chairperson Sinclair. We had a great time at Family Arts Festival and extravaganza. Let's not forget that part of things. Uh, you can see from our pictures, we had some photo, wall, photo walls this year where you could be the Mona Lisa or Vincent Van Gogh. People had fun with that. And of course our egg hunts, which were a blast. We had some wonderful performances from local schools. So big thank you to all of them for coming out, enjoying the day. It was a huge crowd at the stage this year. So we're very excited to uh, be getting even more people than last year. Um, the commissioners, thank you so much for, for being available for that date. Uh, Commissioner Wirtz, Chairperson Sinclair, Vice Chair Kiesenberry, and uh, Commissioner Smith were all able to attend. We did miss you, Commissioner Gibson, but next year. And um, they did a great job emceeing, watching our booth, giving people information, and getting surveys from folks. And so we have a whole pile of surveys to help us make the event even better for next year, as well as making our other events better. So thank you all for being there and for all of your hard work before the event as well. We really appreciate um, that you make this event possible. So thank you for that. Um, kids had a great time. The schools were had a great time. I don't think it could have gone any better. Um, I know that Chairperson Sinclair already spoke to the event. Would anyone else like to make a few comments about what you saw and what you did for the day? Face painting was a big deal. Oh, it was. <laughs> Everybody it was. loved it. And their kids had such a good time. And it was wonderful. The turnout was spectacular. It was. I saw a lot of really cool art projects, too, coming yes. out of the booths. Yes. Yes. There was uh, Bradshaw Mountain High School did abstract painting. There was some really cool abstract paintings uh, going around that I saw. Um, so that was a nice one. The Historical Society was there doing petroglyphs, which turned out really neat. And then, of course, all of our other schools. Um, 
can't thank them all enough. So we got to bring home a leather keychain um, that was, you know, designed and we had a presenter just a couple of meetings ago who taught us about leatherworking. So it was really exciting to take a piece of that um, home with us. And uh, those events tend to open up new doors to creativity that you wouldn't otherwise find. And I know that that's how it goes in my life. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. Well, I'm glad that you all enjoyed yourself. Thank you all for coming and all of your hard work beforehand. And especially the weather. Thank you, yes. weather. <laughs> Couldn't have been better. It worked out really well. And um, we had a, a, a different group for our petting zoo this year. We actually reached out to a, a 4-H group. And I don't know if any of you were able to stop by over there, but it was awesome. They did a great setup. Um, you can tell that they really care for their animals and um, that they were just so happy to be there. So we're hoping to continue that partnership with them next year as well. And Art at the Center is another program that we have recently had a jury for. Uh, our jury members made some selections, which you can see on the screen, and tentatively have scheduled um, some placement for, for some hopefully incoming sculptures based on your feedback this evening. We have totem number one. It's a piece by artist Gary Slater. And Gary has several other pieces on campus, SkyDisc 1 and SkyDisc 2. You can see them on the east side of the library. And his new piece will be very close to those if you look at your map. It's just north of where his current sculptures are located so that we can get some continuity over there and really make his pieces shine. Um, so we are hopeful that that piece will be accepted as well as Blue as the Sky by artist Jean Galazan. And uh, if accepted, Jean's work will go on the hillside near the Civic Center. Uh, if you see the pink star that's at the top there. Um, so we'll get to have a wonderful staff will get to have a wonderful view of that out of our window i'm very excited about that and um jean is also the artist that donated our horse sculptures earlier in the year that are located on the uh, glassford hill trail so we're very excited to have some more of jean's work to exhibit uh, if accepted of course and so um Jury members, I'm sure you have some comments to make about uh, this process and these pieces, so I'll let you take over. I thought it was very good uh, looking at the various pieces, uh, the renditions of them. Um, the idea that uh, Jane Slater, who already has two pieces on display already, wants to ex display uh, totem number one. Uh, so the idea of having multiple pieces, in addition, uh, you have Jean Galazan, who has uh, the horses on Glassford Hill. And if you have not hiked up Glassford Hill lately, uh, do start the hike, at least. And <laughs> you can at least get up to uh, see the horses that are now on the hill. Yes, I was really uh, pleased with Gary Slater's piece that he presented because it it's a nice companion to the other pieces that are there. And the materials are interesting to look at and I can't wait for our citizenry to come out and see it and and uh, check out the new pieces that will be there as well as Jean Salazan's uh, blue, blue as the Sky. We are also very excited to have these pieces on loan. Um, and uh, so we'll have these for a year uh, based on feedback from tonight. Um, and if accepted, we will be having a reception on June 22nd. Um, so I believe that we have to make a decision now as a group. Are we ready for a motion? One at a, one at a time or both? Yeah, should we do one at a time or all? there be additional discussion? I have one question. Uh, blue as the sky. Yes. Uh, that's a combination of materials, both wood and uh, steel. Would the wood be, uh, 
can't get the word out, amenable to being outdoors? And that is, um, so Jean has been on vacation. Uh, we've been playing phone tag this week and trying to schedule an opportunity for staff to make it out there. So barring there being non-appropriate materials or non-durable materials, um, I think we should be okay. So if, if that goes poorly, then I will have that to report back to you next month. Okay. So I'd say let's, you don't mind, vote on all three together. We have to have a motion, please. That's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get a motion to accept the uh, artwork uh, that was uh, presented? I would like to make a motion that we accept the artwork of Gary Slater uh, that has been presented to us and the artwork of Gene Salazan pending uh, confirmation from him that it is durable outdoor materials. Okay. And I'll second that. Okay. We have a motion to accept uh, Totem One from Gene Slater and Blue is the Sky from Gene Galazan. I think I should have said Gary. Gary. Apologize for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's conditional. So all in favor, say aye. 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 Opposition? Ayes. So it passed. Thank you. Congratulations on your new loans. Moving on to new business. Theodore and the Green. Okay, so we have a bunch of save the dates coming up for you. Uh, first, we'll talk about movies under the stars. And uh, Commissioner Gibson, would you like to take the lead or would you like me to take the lead on this one? All right, excellent. So uh, the movies under the stars are free events and movies start at 7.45 p.m. or once dark so that everyone can enjoy the movie fully. They all take place at 7501 East Skoog Boulevard. That's the theater on the green, except for one, which we'll talk about in a moment. And our 2019 movie schedule includes Friday, May 24th, We'll have Friday, May 31st, and this is our exception to being at Theater on the Green. We'll be having another drive-in event at the Event Center parking lot. Very excited about that, and um, thank you all for, for um, getting the drive-in movie going last year so that we can continue it and grow this program. We really appreciate your efforts uh, related to that. We'll continue back at the Civic Center Friday, June 7th, June 14th, June 21st and June 28th. And by the end of next week, we'll have movie titles posted on our website. So if you want to see which movies are going to be playing when, we'll have those available at www.pvaz.net. Um, and that, those will be up by the 1st of May. Our 2019 movie sponsors so far include Arizona Hometown Radio Group. They're our title sponsor for the year. We also have movie sponsors, including the Mingus Mountain Academy Mountain Lions, Sun Valley Tires, and 89A Dental. And you'll be seeing a few other sponsors that we're going to be talking to later this week um, on our next presentation. So welcome back to all of those sponsors. They are all returning. We're very happy to have them. And you can visit the Mingus Mountain Academy ladies at their concession stand each week. So make sure you stop by and get popcorn, candy, and soda from them. They're great ladies, and uh, they're very helpful, and they're there every week. So make sure you stop by and see them. Any questions about Movies Under the Stars? All right. On to Theater on the Green 2019 Summer Concert Series. We're going to kick off this year on Wednesday, May 22nd. Uh, from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m., we're going to be having a DJ dance party out on the theater on the green space. This is for teens, um, so we're hoping to get some of our youth involved in our concerts this year. And since that's the last week of school, it's time to celebrate. So we're going to celebrate with a TJ, DJ dance party. And Sky City Audio will be our DJ for that night. 
On Saturday, May 25th, from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m., we have the Mingus Mountain Bobtet. They're a lively group. They've played before at the library, so some of you may have seen them, and they've played around town, uh, both in Prescott and Prescott Valley. Very popular group, so we're excited to have them on board. On Saturday, June 15th, we'll be doing a Father's Day weekend concert and car show fe featuring Neon Circus, which is a Brooks and Dunn tribute band. We're thrilled to have them. We've been working with the Dewey Car Club to make a car show possible with that event. We'll have games, activities, and all kinds of fun stuff. So kids can take their dads out, out for a special Father's Day weekend event, uh, and it's free, so that'll be great. Um, we will have food trucks there, so if you want to bring a little cash to spend at the food trucks, make sure you do that. On Friday, September 13th, so the end of our summer, we'll have Famous in Denmark and the Shining Star Band. And Friday, September 20th, we have Thunder and Lightning. And don't miss our concerts at Gold Fever Day. That's April 27th, as well as on July 4th at Mountain Valley Park, we do a live concert at our July 4th event. So other great concerts that you can join us for. If you'd like more information about concerts, dates, um, anything like that, you can visit our website at www.pvaz.net or call us at 928-759-3090. Please remember these are outdoor concerts and it is a grass lawn. If you would like to make yourself more comfortable, bring a picnic blanket or uh, some low profile lawn chairs and uh, make sure that you're comfortable for that event. Any questions about our concerts this year? Good job. Excellent. <laughs> and uh, thank you to uh, Commissioner Smith and Vice Chair Kisenberry. They are our Theater on the Green Committee, and they did a great job uh, responding promptly to a barrage of bands that came in this year. Uh, it was really hard to make some choices on who was going to get to play this year. Um, but hopefully some of the bands that we're not able to schedule will hopefully schedule that space on their own, and we'll have even more stuff to re report back to you next time. All right, public art exhibit for April. We have watercolor paintings by Art Sabowski. And Art is a really cool guy. Um, you can see a few pictures of his work on the screen. He's also a veteran, and he flew U-2s, uh, which are a really cool plane. Uh, I don't know too much about them, but I know that they're like the highest flying plane you can get. Such an interesting guy. His bio is hanging up in the cafe when you first enter the library. So you can learn a little bit about art before you go and enjoy art's art. Um, <laughs> great guy, wonderful paintings, and most of them are for sale. So if you're interested in uh, adding to your art collection, Chairperson Sinclair, um, <laughs> please feel free to check out uh, Art's work. And he'll be up through the end of April. Uh, we're thrilled to have him. Uh, he's one of many artists that we'll be featuring this year. If you're an artist looking to exhibit in the public art exhibit, we are scheduling for 2020 now. So um, we'd love to see your artwork. Gold Fever Day coming up. I know at least one of you is very excited about this. Um, Andy, you do have to let the kids fish too. So. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so this year we're doing Gold Fever Day in conjunction with badges and bobbers, which you all may be familiar with. So Gold Fever Day is something that's being brought back after a little bit of a hiatus, and we're very happy to have it back. Uh, badges and bobbers has been going for the last few years, so we decided to combine the free fishing with badges and bobbers with our live music, reenactors, survivalist demos, games, vendors. Uh, we've got hero party rentals there with the rock climbing wall and bounces and all kinds of good stuff um, that's happening with Gold Fever Day. Yeah. We have a BB gun range. We have uh, our survivalist, Tom Blank, who is awesome guy. He's going to be doing demonstrations. We have uh, Southern Flight is our 
headliner for the evening. Before them, you can see the High Mountain Chordsmen do a performance from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And you can also see the Gadabouts performance, and that is... 3 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. So a day full of live music. Uh, you can tour Fitzmaurice Ruins at 11 a.m. Make sure you get there early for that because it will fill up fast. Also make sure you dress appropriately. Closed-toed shoes and get ready to hike because it is a hike up. If you have questions about the Fitzmaurice Ru Ruins tour or any other element of this event, give us a call at 928 Seven five nine three zero nine zero. The event will take place at Fane Park, which is 2200 North 5th Street in Prescott Valley. Badges and bobbers will run from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., but the whole event goes from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m., so you can really make a day of this before you go to the rodeo, if that's what you're planning to do after 7 p.m. Um, but it'll work perfectly. You can go from this event to the rodeo and just have a great day. Uh, we'll have a food vendor there. Penny's Place will be on site. Uh, we have um, prospectors up. Woody Wampler, some of you may know him from uh, Legends of the Superstition Hill. Um, he, he and his group are going to be out helping us with gold panning, so we're thrilled to have them. The Lions Club will be helping us with fishing and volunteering. We'll have police, fire, game and fish, so lots of awesome people uh, helping out with this event. And, of course, we could not do it without our Arts and Culture Commission, so thank you for sponsoring this event um, and helping to make it possible. And we'll be excited to see you guys there as well. Um, so come on up. It's a great day. It's free um, unless you want to buy some food or, or put money in for raffles. And there are some free raffles. And parking. About that. You'll be shuttled down from a lot on 5th and 2nd Street. So be prepared to take a shuttle down to the park. Uh, we do, our, our shuttles are ADA um, appropriate. So you don't need to worry, no matter what's going on, you'll be able to make it down to the park safely. And thank you to HUSD for sponsoring our shuttles that day. We are so excited uh, that Humble School District could help us out with that. Any questions about Gold Fever Day? Hope, I wonder if you would tell us, why would anybody want to visit the Fitzmorris ruins? What, 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 do, we, what do we know about them? Well, it's a Native American ruin. Um, up a hill from Fane mm -hmm. Park, and most of the time it's locked. And the site stewards do tours, which you can call them, or actually you can call us, and we'll arrange, uh, we'll help you arrange a tour otherwise. But this is a really special day because they're coming out and uh, doing tours at an event, which their tours are free. It's a great opportunity to learn more about. Um, some of the older history of Prescott Valley before the pioneers came, before the gold panners came. Way um, before. This goes back before. to the Anasazi Indians. And it's uh, very, very, very old. And there's bits and pieces there, and that's why it's kept fenced <laughs> so yeah. that nothing gets disturbed. But it's an exciting place to see, and it was a lookout spot for them. This was a very defensible position for their village at that time. I'm excited to visit. It. I've only seen it from the outside, so me too. <laughs> it's it's going to go fast though too, so make sure if you want to do that tour, you're there early. All right. Thank you. That's all I have for new business. Thank you, Mrs. Hooper. Mr. Witte, meeting calendars for 2019-2020. Yes, sir. Uh, staff has prepared for you two different calendars. Um, one is for work studies. The other one is for regular business. Uh, we have a variety of dates, meeting monthly at 5.30 p.m. Work studies will take place in conference room 428 in the Civic Center with regular business meetings such as this taking place in the library auditorium located at 7401 Scoot Boulevard. Typically, as your calendar reflects to you, meetings are not held in July, December, and June. This is a reflection of past calendars. Uh, if the commission would like to change or adjust that schedule, be happy to do so. Each one of these calendars would be presented to the commission next month for your adoption uh, to be put into place next fiscal year that would start in August. 
if so selected. Work studies would be taking place on the second Wednesday of the month at 5.30 with regular meetings taking place on the third Wednesday of the month. With that, I'd be happy to answer any questions on the preparation of these calendars. Questions? You didn't hit a single birthday, so thanks for that. Hey, <laughs> wow. How did we do that? Oh, did you forget? She promised a cake. So. <laughs> All right, excellent. Well, staff will move forward then as presented, provide these calendars for your adoption next month. Thank you. All right, thank you. Moving on while you're still there, election of officers. Yes, this would be a matter also before the commission next month for the election of officers. This would be your chair, vice chair, and secretary uh, for the commission. Uh, unfortunately, even though all of you have asked for Commissioner Sinclair's automatic renewal as chair, he has termed out. Uh, that is typically two consecutive terms, back to back. Um, dictatorship. Dictatorship, yes. <laughs> We're going to have a coup coming into this next uh, uh, fiscal uh, calendar year. Uh, so the commission uh, should consider, have some dialogue uh, regarding uh, those individuals that would like to seek the position of chair, which could be a succession item uh, in which Ms. Uh, Quisenberry would be able to be recommended for that position. Uh, Commissioner Smith, I believe, is currently acting as our secretary uh, for the commission. Uh, so if she or any other member would like to move in any position, uh, feel free to consider that as the vice chair and secretary do not have term limitations in doing such. So that is the information I have for you tonight so that you can come to next month's meeting prepared. Uh, for either making sure there is or is not a coup uh, <laughs> for next fiscal year. Uh, we'll look forward to being able to assist the commission as needed through that process. Okay. Any questions in regards to those positions and then also our process for next meeting? Okay. Clear as mud as usual. So. Uh, Thank you very welcome, much. Sir. Unscheduled public appearances, not seeing any. Let's move on to item number 10, next meeting. The next meeting of the uh, Town of Prescott Valley Art and Culture Commission work study will be Wednesday, May 8th, 2019, 5.30 in conference room 428. And the next meeting of the Town of Prescott Valley Art and Culture Commission regular meeting would be Wednesday, May 15th, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. here in the auditorium. And as always, I do invite the public to join us for our Art and Culture Commission regular meeting. Uh, bring ideas, bring different issues that you may want to address to the commission. So please join us. If no other business, I call for an adjournment. All in favor? Can I get a motion? Motion to adjourn. Second. A motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor, say aye. 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 Position, none. So moved.